So, it turns out your connected vehicle may be snitching about your bad driving habits to your insurer, whether you've opted in or not. Cue the intro. Uh, Star Center, this is Edward Velasquez speaking. How may I help you, Mr. Muska? Uh, how you doing today, sir? Terrific, how are you? Going on pretty good, pretty good. Just uh, cruising AZ, you know? Yep. Little vacation out here. Okay. Uh, what's going on? You know where any good handrails are out here? I have no idea. You haven't been there yet? No. No? Never been there. All right, man. You ever skateboard? Nope. You never? Never. Oh, man. Guess what? What's that? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Sigma Workshop and welcome to episode 3 of Sigma Talks. Your connected car is snitching to your insurer. I'm your host, Patrick Tapeman, so named because, check this out, Mariah Carey Daydream. Lizzo, factory sealed, Lizzo special, factory sealed and South Central Cartel in Gats We Trust. Now, on to our topic. From the Washington Post, March 11, 2024. Automakers are sharing consumers' driving behavior with insurance companies, LexisNexis, which generates consumer risk profiles for the insurers, knew about every trip GM drivers had taken in their cars, including when they sped, braked too hard, or accelerated rapidly. By Kashmir Hill, March 11, 2024. Ken Dahl says he has always been a careful driver. The owner of a software company near Seattle, he drives a leased Chevrolet Bolt. He's never been responsible for an accident. So Mr. Dahl, 65, was surprised in 2022 when the cost of his car insurance jumped by 21%. Oof. Quotes from other insurance companies were also high. One insurance agent told him his LexisNexis report was a factor. Hmm. LexisNexis, a New York-based global data broker with a risk solutions division that caters to the auto insurance industry and has traditionally kept tabs on car accidents and tickets. Upon Mr. Dahl's request, LexisNexis sent him a 258-page consumer disclosure report, which it must provide per the Fair Credit Reporting Act. <clears throat> what it contained stunned him. More than 130 pages detailing each time he or his wife had driven the Bolt over the previous six months. It included the dates of 640 trips, their start and end times, the distance driven, and the counting of any speeding, hard braking, or sharp acceleration. The only thing it didn't have is where they had driven their car. On a Thursday morning in June, for example, the car had been driven 7.33 miles in 18 minutes. There had been two rapid accelerations and two incidents of hard braking. According to the report, the trip details had been provided by General Motors, the manufacturer of the Chevy Bolt. LexisNexis analyzed that driving data to create a risk score, quote, for insurers to use as one factor of many to create more personalized insurance coverage. According to a LexisNexis spokesman, Dean Carney, eight insurance companies had requested information about Mr. Dahl from LexisNexis over the previous month. Wow. It felt like a betrayal, Mr. Dahl said. They're taking information that I didn't realize was going to be shared and screwing with our insurance. In recent years, insurance companies have offered incentives to people who install dongles in their cars or download smartphone apps that monitor their driving, including how much they drive, how fast they take corners, how hard they hit the brakes, and whether they speed. But Drivers are historically reluctant to participate in these programs, as Ford Motor put it in a patent application that describes what is happening instead. Car companies are collecting information directly from internet connected vehicles for use by the insurance industry. So, essentially, if you drive a connected car, which is a lot of cars manufactured over the past decade, there is a data stream outlining your driving habits being piped directly to LexisNexis, who then serves up said data to your insurer. Who 
could have predicted this? Well, on September 29, 2000, almost 24 years ago, I made a post on the Usenet, and if you don't know what that is, that's a whole other conversation. Use the Google group Alt Auto Saab. Uh, subject, ominously standard OnStar. Did anyone ever think that having a satellite tracking your car at all times might be a bad thing? I think a civil liberties issue could be made of it. What if you're delinquent in your payments? The repo man need only locate your ride via satellite and take it back. Call me paranoid, but I'm not comfy with a system that can recall my call, car's geographical position at any time. Just seems insidious. Sobster. So that was me on Usenet back in the day. I'd gotten my first car, 85 Saab 900 8 valve. Took it on an epic road trip, and that will be the subject of a forthcoming Sigma Talks video. But back to the point. I may have not predicted this particular situation per se, but nearly a quarter century ago, I was sounding the alarm on the potential for manufacturers to use vehicle data in ways that are contrary to customers' best interests. My post was in response to OnCar, OnStar becoming standard equipment in all US spec Saab models for 2001. So, you ask, how might I counteract this intrusion? Excellent question, and it depends on what you're driving. If you're rolling in something that relies on OTA software updates, like a Tesla, I think it's safe to say you're SOL. But if you're driving a GM product, like the uh, aforementioned Chevrolet Bolt, you can probably disable OnStar just by pulling a fuse. Maybe? So my 2016 Cadillac ATS is OnStar equipped, of course. And as I understand, the original OnStar systems were quite primitive compared to today's standards and used uh, 1G cellular networks to send voice and data. But I noticed my ATS offers in-car Wi-Fi, uh, so I would presume it's connecting to something via 4G and, or 4G LTE. But again, this falls outside my area of expertise and I'm not going to do the research. So if you're watching and have any technical knowledge of the, the, the specifics of these OnStar systems, leave a comment down below. What I do know is that the OnStar system does have a dedicated fuse, it's fuse number 12. In the, in the back, so ending data transmission ought to be as simple as yanking said fuse. So we're going to dig in and do that. So this is my 2016 Cadillac ATS, six speed manual. It is indeed OnStar equipped and it has like Wi-Fi inside. So uh, I've never used any of this stuff. I don't really care about this particular feature. There's a Wi-Fi connection. I'm assuming it's 4G or 4G LTE, which means, yeah, it could be snitching data to GM or whoever about my accelerations and about hitting the 137 mile speed limiter or whatever else might be happening with this car. So we're going to go ahead and disable OnStar and it's very simple. So there is a fuse panel in the trunk here that comes off and uh, everything's in there. If you look at the diagram here, got fuse number 12 OnStar 10 amp. Let's get rid of that. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and disable OnStar. I've never used OnStar. I've never liked the idea of OnStar. I'm never going to use OnStar. So we're gonna get rid of it real easy. Look at this, we just have a simple fuse diagram. That's our culprit right there, number 12, OnStar 10A. So we'll just... <laughs> That's our guy. Yeah, here we go. Boom. Bye bye, OnStar. <laughs> Y'all need to stop snitching. And there you have it. Folks, 
If you're a fan of any sort of spirited driving, and if you're watching the Sigma workshop, I assume there's some level of enthusiasm. You may want to look into putting the brakes on your vehicle's data transmission back to the manufacturer. And if you're driving a Tesla, God help you because you're already too far gone into this technocratic dystopian clown world. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And do share this video far and wide so we can raise awareness of this important issue. Consider supporting the channel via Patreon. First 100 patrons will get an on-camera shout out. And if you want, we can even FaceTime and there will be other perks, TBA. Or you can even support via Venmo or Cash App, the Sigma Workshop. I should also note that this channel is not yet monetized, so at a minimum, please share the content and just keep on watching. More to come and soon. All right, that's all for now. We'll see you next time.